A lot has changed in Switzerland since Rahim Daya became CEO of Barclays Private Bank Switzerland. He's here today to talk about how the Swiss location fits into the British Bank's global network, which spans across Europe, the Middle East, Asia and Africa. He will also be telling me how recent events in Switzerland's banking landscape are being perceived internationally. Hello, Rahim. Hi, Jade. So when you first moved to Geneva two years ago, Switzerland had two systemically relevant banks. Now we're down to one. How does this affect your business and what, how is it being perceived internationally? So I think, um, so let me talk about my, my business in the context of Barclays. So the Swiss bank um, is a critically important center for Barclays globally. So we see all of our international flows coming into Switzerland. When I think about why do they come here, it's because of a couple of things. One, it's because Switzerland's a known entity to these clients. It's known for its stability, continuity, <clears throat> and safety. Um, I, think, I think the measures taken over the last few days um, with regard to the local Swiss banking system further enhance the narrative around stability. So from my perspective, clients seem unaffected about, uh, you know, they're, they're not asking questions about uh, Switzerland. Um, we've not seen, you know, we've not seen any outflows um, from the Swiss bank. Right. Now, you actually dealt with Credit Suisse last year when you took over its uh, sub-Saharan African, excluding South African portfolio. Um, can you tell me about the deal? Sure. So <clears throat> last year, um, we agreed a referral agreement um, with Credit Suisse. It's not classic M&A. So um, we, we looked at a portfolio of clients. And the reason why it was interesting was because um, Barclays is known in Africa um, for various reasons. Um, we have a deep history. Um, clients recognize the name. Um, our clients or our client base typically has been educated in the UK or sends their kids to the UK for education. Um, so from a, a proposition perspective, it was interesting. Um, secondly, um, the assets were all Swiss booked. So I was, I, I, and I'm looking to find opportunities to build the, 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 the bank here in Switzerland. Um, and third, I was looking to build scale in two of my centers, um, Switzerland and, 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 and Dubai. And with this deal, I've been able to take um, around 20 colleagues from Credit Suisse to Barclays across, mainly across Dubai, Zurich, and also London. Um, and, and overall, um, onboarded more than 100 clients. Can you tell me about the challenges in onboarding clients in Sub-Saharan Africa? Sure. I mean, I think the first thing I'll say, Jade, is onboarding in any private bank today is not that, is not that easy. Um, what I'll say is um, Africa, um, along with any other emerging market, um, faces similar challenges. So from an onboarding perspective, again, because this is a referral agreement, it meant the clients had to be onboarded from scratch onto the Barclays platform. Um, so that meant that we gave or we did a full diligence um, process. What I find, Jade, is where, where, um, where you have a clear story, a clearly articulated story of clients and how they've accumulated their wealth or created their wealth over years, that helps in the onboarding process a lot. Um, so we have a number of checks and balances in place, onboarding committees, et cetera. Um, but it's not you know, necessarily specific to Africa. I would say it's for most emerging markets. You need to have an additional layer of oversight to make sure that you're onboarding the right clients. Now, you mentioned before that you head not only the private bank in Switzerland, but also the uh, Middle Eastern business from your hub in Dubai. Can you tell me, are these two financial centers in competition? So, so, so Jen, I was previously based in, 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 in Dubai for, for a short time, and I will tell you, it's indeed the opposite. So the centers are, 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 are not in competition. So Barclays is a cross-border bank. That means that we originate um, clients internationally and book them onto our main centers, which are Switzerland and the UK. For clients in the Middle East, and I see this a lot, they are already exposed to the region. So in fact, they use banks to get an alternative, right? So, so we see a lot of global flows coming from the Middle East to Switzerland. Um, 
and for anyone that spends time here in the summer, you will see lots of Middle East um, uh, visitors during during the 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 hot um, the, the hot summer months in the in the in the Middle East. So they will use Switzerland. I think Geneva in particular is a bit of a hub for, for the summer. They'll shoot between Paris and London and come back, but they will use their time in the summer to see their banks, um, to be active. Um, so I don't see it as a as a competitor center, no. Fantastic, Rami. It was a pleasure speaking to you today. Thanks, Jade. Good to be here. And thank you to you for watching Finews.